Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday, and uh, Debate Sensei here, 8 o'clock. We're going to be talking about um, how to choose an IPDA topic. We got Tim C. from Visolutions, San Diego State University. Yeah. How's it going? Uh, I'm Jerry Kavika Miller, Professor of Communications, Debate Coach. Um, Matt isn't here. He's got a, a dog grooming side hustle, and there's this toy poodle that just couldn't wait. So um, we we had kind of a fun way of dealing with this. So even though he's not here, even though he's not here, uh, he did offer some sort of feedback, and so we're going to be able to use that in the, this. Like uh, it was a fun little exercise that I thought would be uh, interesting to illustrate how to choose IPDA topics. But uh, it, I think. Uh, I'm also I'm also thinking this is how we should do like topic selection for our our asynchronous tournament. Um, yeah, yeah, like rank order. Right. Be, yeah, because it, it, you can't do the whole striking thing the same way, and you're getting all the topics at the same time. And it's like you just rank order them. You can see how the outcomes. It's it's actually pretty interesting, in my opinion. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, for yeah. those that don't know about IPDA, what is IPDA? Like, how do you select topics? What does an IPDA do? Right, right, right. So, um, uh, IPDA, now, man, I, I feel old because back in my day, they just told you what topic to do. You know what I mean? And you had yeah. 20 minutes to do it, and you liked it. Um, and so, <laughs> IPDA, it does it different, right? They, um, And this is fairly new to me, you know what I mean, in my like long, long career in debate, but that you get five topics and then you and your opponent strike four out of, you go back and forth and you strike them one at a time until there's only yeah. one left and that's the topic that you debate and you get 30 minutes to do that yeah and you got the internet which like we didn't have and devices each other, which is like a very unique weird cool thing right like yeah. IPDA the culture is not like all right, how am I going to come up with some really out there crazy case that there's no way they're going to be able to get and have, you know, nine sub planks that they can't possibly answer because I found this thing. It's like collaborative, like prep time is in the same room and they like talk to each other sometimes. Like, oh, I, yeah. I think I'm going to do this. Like that's, it's a, a common thing that is almost encouraged is to create a better debate. The affirmative side is supposed to like kind of share what they're going to do. Oh man. That's it seems like it'd be a, a lot of room for taunting. It's like, oh, <laughs> look what I found. Look what's coming your way, man. You better be prepared for this one. And <laughs> I mean, like, also end up with topics that are just so like, I don't know, just value judgments, like just normative claims about the world that, I, I mean, they, they create for uh, debates that are not your typical here's a policy, let me break down the five ways that it impacts, you know, GDP, and then why it's it's terrible for, you know, indigenous yeah, wildlife. I remember wildlife. having a bunch yeah. of debate rounds like that. I remember that all the time in Parley. And then, you know, they do kind of get more and more, I don't know, it seems to follow the same pattern um, that you see all other type of debate formats go through. You know, like topic yeah. selection is just hard, man. And it's, it's yeah. the thing that kind of, it kind of makes or breaks a debate event. You know what I mean? So. I think that's what makes IPDA cool is at least for now, which I'm sure eventually it will devolve to policy as everything does. And yes, I use devolve <laughs> with like discrimination in, uh, intentional. Like, I think that it's neat that if both parties want to do it, like it, it's not the case that one person gets to really choose what happens. Like the fact that there's that interplay and you end up yeah. getting down to like, the final topic is something that both of them, that both parties are kind of cool with. So usually tournament directors will give in the list of five, like one policy, a value, a fact, a, like a metaphor and something else. And I think that's neat. Like if, so if you yeah. really hate debating fact rounds, just strike the fact. Or if you really don't want to make it a policy round and want to debate something in a more, you know, uh, holistic way, then like strike the policy. And I think that's a really cool opportunity that's, you know, uh, given to IPDA debaters and creates for some rounds and some difference of uh, experience and some difference of judging that you don't otherwise get at most debate tournaments. It it also makes for a really difficult uh, for, 
for hosting tournaments because you got to write up. Oh you know, my 30, god, unbelievable base, numbers! You know I mean? top, so. Yeah, you know that yeah. was a that was a thing. Huge shout out to to Ashley Knuckles Cuevas from from SDSU. Her recommendation that tournament directors crowdsource topics. I had mm. not heard that before. Like I, I guess I'd heard that like a long time ago for like a little local tournament, but to be done at a league level, I think that that is so smart, and I think that will help tournament directors from here on out. Because my God, when you've got you know six prelims and minimum two out rounds with five topics each, and that's just for IPDA, you're not talking you know impromptu extemp and parley involved. Like that's a crazy number of topics that you got to come up with. So I like the, the yeah. ability to generate more just by using you know everyone's input yeah so uh like i i thought it would the best way to illustrate like choosing topics we're just going to be talking about how people normally choose it but you're also going to see how like there's a whole lot of you could i can't even fathom the amount of strategy that you might be able to sort of think of you know what i mean it's like yeah. I, I, like it's a rabbit trail that maybe you don't want to go down because uh, you know start, <laughs> going crazy. start going crazy okay so hey let's let, let's tell them the, the topics okay or I, i'm gonna show you uh the topics yep. real quick okay? <clears throat> so here we go so last week what we did where is it where is it here we go Boom. here we go okay um not that that there we go so here we go. Uh, so we were doing these topics, and we uh, we I went to um, a, a tournament that was uh, being held in where was it in Kentucky, right? Um, I believe it was. Uh, if, if you read the description, it, it, it explains it there. But um, so this is like straight picked from around um, from a real tournament, and. Uh, so what we did was we looked at these five and you ranked order them. Okay, so take a look. This is these are the results right here. You can see hmm. that the way that they're rank ordered um, is from from best to worst. So you can see here Tim that uh, you chose the, the the first topic on the affirmative. So we got affirmative mm -hmm. and negative. All right. So we realized really quickly that uh, you have to do a list for each one because some topics you don't want to debate. Either way, you know what I mean. Like it is your it is your five for both sides. You just don't want to talk about it. In fact, yeah. Matt did that. Matt had the exact same rankings for both affirmative and negative. I thought that was interesting. Huh? What do you think about that? Well, he's not here to defend himself, so I just think that's the stupidest strategy that I've ever heard. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think so. He he said his justification was that he just ranked it based on the debate he'd want to see regardless of either side. Like yeah. this is a round that he would want to talk about, which is kind yeah. of a cool way of coming at it. But I don't know, maybe I just, I, I see some as more lopsided than others. Like I don't see them all as equal footing. Um, yeah. Like they're not even rounds. So like there's some that I think it's just like, Oh, this is a probably a pretty clear winning side over the other. Um, so that's, that's at least where I got some of mine. Like I think I used a similar mat strategy of like, I ranked it based on the things that I know the most about yeah. and then the things that I know the least about I put last but uh I still definitely think that there's a easier side to each of these yeah like for between your two you can see that the first two topics you thought were the best and then then the rest were you know you kind of did it that way I think uh mine mine's way different I don't know what the hell I was thinking I'll be honest with you look at that <laughs> All right, well, let's, I mean, so we can, we can look at it so we can see the rankings, but then, yeah. uh, you know, so tell me on the UK versus US elections, uh, we both picked that one first on the affirmative side. Yeah. So, so let's do like, let, we'll do it one at a time. So let's say Tim versus Matt. So like Matt's on the negative, he gets to strike first, right? Yeah. So he strikes, he strikes the daylight savings and it goes over to your side. Your five is that you strike professional sports, yeah. right? And then it comes back, he strikes cryptocurrency, okay? And then back to you, you strike leadership, and that leaves UK versus US elections. Awesome, which was my first choice yeah. anyway. Okay. Neat. Yeah, see, so like that's the really interesting part. So here, take a look. So the first one, so this is your first choice, but mm -hmm. it's his third choice as, on negative, on the negative, right? Yeah. And so, um, 
so right away you notice that like no matter what whatever you rank as the bottom two they're gone you know that but the the question yeah. is whether or not the, the remainder you know kind of show up the same way all right and so i right. did that for, for the other ones too so for you and me if it was you on the huh. affirmative and me on the negative based off of your you see you're still you're still getting ranked based off of your affirmative rankings right, right. like that still happening but but because it's now applied to my negative rankings that's the outcome huh. and i think okay. so that was your second and that was also yeah. my second on the negative okay so we both struck each other's first on that one as well, well. I, I feel like that's maybe common like unless there's one topic that's just so much better that motivators really want to hit i feel like you're yeah. probably more likely to get your second choice i don't yeah. know so did you do did you model any others I, I modeled all of them. So, um, oh, so out of, yeah, so it, it was, it, it results in six different rounds, right? You have two affirmatives. I have two affirmatives. Matt has two affirmatives and we do, you yeah. know, we shuffle all the negatives. And so that results in six rounds. And, um, there was three people who got, each one of us on the affirmative got first choice on the affirmative. I thought that was interesting. All right. Cause huh. uh, yeah. So my first choice was the elections. Matt was the uh, professional sports, and um, yours was the elections as well. Yeah. So, okay, so that was, as far as like but nobody strategy, on the negative got their first choice. Nobody on the negative uh, got their first choice. Maybe just because you strike first. Maybe I don't know. I mean, like I was trying to figure that out, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So the affirmative ends up actually choosing the topic. Like they get the final yeah. choice. They get right. Yeah, but I mean, there was there was one time like it was uh, Matt versus Tim. You were on the negative, where you actually got your second choice, and he got his third choice. Hmm. Interesting, very, kind of like the middle. So, so yeah. for your students that are taking IPDA uh, that you know decide like I'm going to go to the tournament with that, how do you recommend they pick topics, or do you not tell them and just let them go for it and figure it out? Well, uh, okay, no, we. We just go and kind of go through the exercise and, and once they feel comfortable doing it, right. You know, um, and, and in the end it's them choosing their own topics. All right. Um, and so uh, I think getting familiar with the process, but now that I think about it, I'm one, I'm thinking about the telling it was like, you really are only choosing the two worst topics and then you're leaving everything else up to chance. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, what are the bottom yeah. two and just strike those, you know what I mean? It's, and so, um, and if somebody else strikes it before, you, yeah, you know, uh, and then you're you're good to go. Um, but yeah, don't get all emotionally invested in your first choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not likely. So okay. um, there was pick the two worst and kill them. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, there was a few. There was a few interesting ones. Like I told you that you versus Matt, you were mm -hmm. on the affirmative for yeah. the UK elections, but when it was me on the affirmative versus you you have to huh. you have to be de debating the other side of that i well i mean that was my first choice and then my second choice in the negative i think just because i know the most about us like my criteria are like if i know so one of the, one of them that was in there was um god i don't even remember the wording but it was like uh sports um i have it written down sports relegation i don't know what that is yeah okay so like what me and Matt, we fell on that one. Sports okay, so I don't know what a relegation system is. Okay, so a relegation system, they got it in soccer. Oh, and what that means is that um, it's not like a it's not like a, a playoff series, right? It's it's more like, you know, a cumulative um, getting gathering of points, right? And if you if you end up at the end of the season on top, then you win. But if you end up last place, you get pushed down to a sort of like a minor league, we might call it in baseball, right? Oh, wow. And so they get relegated to like one of the sort of lower leagues. And not only that, but one of the lower leagues, they get they get to get bumped up. So it'd That's be like a neat. minor league baseball team kind of gets to take over, you know what I mean, as um, in, in the, the in the majors. You know, they get That's their shot cool, in the majors. It sounds pretty cool. And San Diego <laughs> Padres are definitely dropped into minor leagues every day in the year. <laughs> No, it's so sad. Good, you know. I mean, it only takes a pandemic, <laughs> right? <laughs> just working somewhere. It's just like crying inside. But uh, yeah, so I think 
there's something to be said about maybe my our strategy, like as I employed kind of the same one that that Matt did. Uh, maybe our strategy isn't the most sound because you get 30 minutes to prep. So like, even if I have no idea what something is, you can learn enough about something in 30 minutes. You can, you know, formulate an opinion and some arguments on it. I think I just went off the bat, like, you know, old school parley, assuming I didn't get the internet. What do I know about that? I can write stuff about, right, um, but, right, right. but I'm, you know, assuming having internet math justification, cause he's like, I don't know a whole lot about relegation either, but I want to debate about sports because that never comes up in a parley round. It's like, all right, yeah. that's a fair point. So you end up with, you know, just a, a different perspective and like a more interesting round and maybe it'll keep your judges awake a little bit more. Well, it's cool because on one, uh, so when it's Matt on the affirmative, that's our topic. But when I'm on the affirmative, it's also the topic. So we would like, it's this really good sort of, you know, one-to-one -one matchup, you know I mean? I think, man, how, what I wouldn't give to have more of that, you know what I mean? It's like having two debate teams, you know, like flipping. Well, I mean, you got all that in, in policy debate. You got that right. in NFL, you know what I mean? It's like that's happened all yeah. the time. But well, especially there's, there's, in like uh, in round robins and tournaments with double elimination. Um, yeah. And so they end up with like locked sides. I thought that those are, are some of the most fascinating things. Uh, like there was, it was, I was in that high school and that happened and it was like a semifinal round where the sides were locked. And my, our fourth round was against the team and we were on the negative and we lost, but we, it was like our only loss. And so we made it through to semis. And it turns out we hit the same team again, but because we'd just gone on the neg, we had to go on the affirmative. And that team beat us on both sides. And I was like, damn, uh, if I don't get my cap for that. Like that is that's yeah. that's pretty good work to be able to like and it was one after the other. Like it wasn't even we were in, even in the same room. I think they just knew that like it was easier for tournament organization, whatever. So we just like put away our negative case and pulled out our affirmative case and like went for it. And I think that that's a really unique things like the judges obviously didn't see but all of us in this room like theoretically we could have just kept the flows from 10 seconds before and been like all right what were the best arguments and we even tried to do that and i think that that's like really speaks to a good team is when you can win both sides of it so um i mean or, or oftentimes uh you know larger tournaments that will do um double prep so the first two rounds you prep together so instead of 15 minutes of prep you get uh, for parley, you get 30 minutes of prep, but you have to prepare both sides. I really enjoy those too, because I think it's, it's useful for students to get to like, you know, completely shift gears in their head and like learn a lot about a topic in a very short amount of time. Um, but you also don't necessarily just go down like one random rabbit trail. Like you get to dig up, you know, four sides of an argument because you end up with, you know, opponents on either side as well. I think that's fascinating. Well, like you get a lot of you depth. Come right. up with three different sides to the elections because not only were you on the affirmative versus bat, but against bat on the negative and for me on that, <laughs> like no <laughs> way. three out of your four rounds are on that one same topic. Wow. Interesting. Well, I mean, I guess I'll put it at the top of my list, but that's, that's antithetical to the strategy we just said, like where you just eliminate the worst topics. Like I kept that at the top because I wanted to debate it most, but yeah, huh. That's yeah. weird. So I maybe do pick the two worst, but also like have a favorite. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know, man. Like it, it. There's. I think. I think there. There's really fun ways to adapt this to our asynchronous approach. You know okay. what I mean? That um, where and I think we're, like we got to do this, man. We're gonna do this. All right. Where we're it's gonna be more of a form that we send out beforehand. You know, and yeah. just. You, rank order them and then now when we start pairing you up with people we could just do that sort of you know um configuration and you know you're going to get your top one of your top three you know you're going to get one of your top three right, All right? which one it is, right. is 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 crap shoot a bit but like you you strike you know two of them you know you're going to get your at least your top three um you know i didn't even consider this but you know it's going to be weird so for our asynchronous tournament you've got each team or in this case individual Get six rounds, right? And the, it's all going to be from the same topic pool. I mean, this is maybe something we ought to, ought to consider. Are we going to just have a bunch of different topic pools for each pairing? Or do we use the same five topics? And like, it's, you know, just a, a statistical certainty that you debate the same topic for at least two of your rounds. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I was thinking about that as well. You know, like, how do we, how do we deal with that? But I'm thinking just get... I think we could do six rounds. You know what I mean? Um, well, we can just do three rounds and then we just kind of double it. So affirmative and negative, 
just like we did, right? Like what we did was we took we took this and between three people we 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 did you know two lists each. So if you if you gave right. people three topics and they did two lists each, you should have enough variety to you know to shuffle people around for for that stuff. So in in total, you're proposing what would that be? Fifteen topics, like three rounds worth yeah. of topics. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I think it would still be interesting just, you know, because it's possible that it would happen that way. If people ended up with like this scenario, it's asynchronous, right? So you've got, you know, a week to record six rebuttals. If a couple of your rebuttals were on different sides of the same topic, I think that would be interesting. <laughs> or even better, if you had a couple of speeches that were on the same side of the same topic, but you responded oh. to different opponents. I think that's even more interesting. Like maybe that would be a huge pain in the ass and te teams would want to just be like, all right, I'm going to record one response because this team had the same, you know, first argument, but then I got to record two seconds, like just trying to save themselves time. I don't know. So right now we have this restriction on, on submissions that they have to be one shot, you know, unedited. Right, that's true. No editing, so you can't right. do that. Yeah. Right, right. But what if that just is another category of debate, you know, of uh, that you like, one of them single shot debate, but then there's mm -hmm. edited debates, you know what I mean? And like, why not? Why not? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you can still have time limits on them. And like, and now mm -hmm. if you open the door to like animation and stuff, I understand that, um, that, you know, like some people are going to have like advantages to it, but I kind of want to see what that type of debate looks like, like just really high production quality debate on, on a single topic back and forth, asynchronous. I think that'd I be know. a cool thing to do over a summer. So you just like really extend the timelines, but call it like, yeah, like, like, like super open division. And yeah. you end up with just like warring YouTubers, you know, like yeah. how do you create yeah. the most like, persuasive have, video for something, you know? You could have camps compete against each other that way. That'd be sick. I think right? that'd be awesome, right? Like, Let's really come up with the best argument amongst you know the fifty of us. They're all here. How do we put this together? And then you've got the actual production it out, out and edit it out and like present it and stuff like that. Oh my god! I'm like, then there's yeah, a nerd out idea from the entire other. Okay, so on IPDA because I love that idea. <laughs> I think like, that. like I think about some persuasive videos that I've seen. Like man, if someone were to make something really persuasive against that, what would that be? But okay, so for IPDA, then when the round is happening in real time, so when it's not asynchronous. One of the things that I find most interesting about IPDA is that like courtesy matters. That is actually one of the categories on an IPDA ballot is like courtesy between the debaters. Interesting, right? Like it's, it's a pretty like direct shot that they include that. So as to try and, you know, create a different debate environment than, than many rounds can get to. Not that all rounds are super adversarial or cutthroat, but like, you know, they certainly do. And so I think that's another interesting, you know, avenue that they go with it. The difference between IPDA and Parley, or and really every other kind of debate, I've seen a lot of coaches really harp on like, they are two different things, they should be judged differently, you should compete differently. And then I see a lot of judges that still vote down, you know, competitors because they didn't have an agent of action or like things like that, where it's it's missing like a technical component expected in another, you know, traditional round. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, is that just, again, like everything kind of boils to what the majority of the community knows? Or like, should there be, uh, like, you know, in, in some leagues, you have to certify to be a, you know, an interp judge or to be, you know, a policy judge, like you need to have some experience in the event, like, should IPDA judges only be there if they have some experience? Like, I guess that's too tough, because it's too new of an event. But like, if you coach it or something, you could, you know, reasonably coach. Judging. If I remember right, that there is something actually in, uh, you know, either a, a mission statement or, a, you know, a constitution or something like that, 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 that so this event is supposed to be really engaging a, an average person that you're supposed to be able to pull anybody off the street and they should be able to listen to this and render a verdict, right? Mm. That at least, I don't know if that's like an unofficial philosophy or an official one but that's what i have heard um at least and i haven't done the due diligence to see where it might be written down um and so I, as far as i don't know the training i think that this topic selection thing is supposed to kind of fix that a little bit you know what i mean that yeah the, the randomness you know what i mean you're supposed to kind of accept the randomness a little bit and that might be a little healthy i think that's healthy you know that yeah I, like I, I don't know, like when it, it, 
when I look at the best debaters in the nation, like rarely do they, you know, exceed like 80% of their rounds uh, that they win, you know? And, and yeah. even when they're, around, you know, it's like, like it, it's, it's, it's a numbers game. You know, it's like, you're not just mm -hmm. right or wrong. You, you can win ballots or you can't, that's kind of the game, you know? Um, and yeah. so and the and winning ballots in IPDA is just a little bit, a little bit more random. Sure. So for these, I think one of the things uh, that I was interested in is for these topics, you have an order and you came up with it with, you know, some strategy in mind. What would you generally argue on that? So not, we don't have to go through like, you know, all five topics and both sides necessarily, but at least for the ones that you picked, did you pick it with an argument in mind? I guess I should phrase it that um, way. Yeah. So, so there's a couple of, of um, like, so for, for, like let's say our topics right here, right? Like yeah. we're doing the elections. I'm on the affirmative, and the cryptocurrency. I'm on the negative. Okay. okay. So for the cryptocurrency one, um, I I think you could do a capitalism critique pretty easy on the negative. Okay. And just say it 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 doesn't solve the crypto. It, it doesn't solve a anything to tip the balance, right? Is because you're talking about outweighing the harms. Is like now they're they're both on the same side of the scale. Um, so it's impossible for them to outweigh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just another form of capitalism and then you do a capitalism critique. Okay. I and I know I'm... there's a lot of literature out there and I know I could, I could actually, you know, I can, um, uh, reference people and, and, and stuff like that. It just, I know there's a sure. lot of evidence to, to put together an argument. Um, well, you get an interesting point, like a capitalism critique has there, you can go the very formal route and you can reference you know mill or whatever and, and really get into the detail of it uh, but then in ipda where it's typically you're not going for uh you know procedural arguments and truly and, and purely theoretical arguments in that way uh there's obviously a more uh natural conversational way that you can frame a critique right where you're still yeah, having yeah, yeah. Philosophical I, I, disagreement with something without you know throwing a framework and a roll of the ballot and all that kind of stuff into it necessarily but uh yeah, I think, I think you would probably go a lot further using that same philosophy that wins, you know, any other kind of traditionally procedural round, but just make it into a, a much more conversational format. And you got 30 minutes of prep to do it to make that I, kind of happen. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, I guess, yeah, you're talking about a cost benefit analysis on that. And so um, I'd be like, I'd be challenged. The cat, the critique would be challenging. I'm like, what are the benefits it's producing? But yeah, so what's it? Yeah. You know, and, and so it's almost like, it's it's almost like a, a press on like on your your burden mm -hmm. on the affirmative is kind of like right. Yeah. Right. So, um, but for so this a, one, yeah, for this one, I I rank that pretty high on on both sides too, actually, um, because on the negative. I'd be kind of, I'd be kind of doing the same thing. Like, I'm like, hey, look at the leaders on both of these countries. Uh, I don't think either one of them, <laughs> you know, can outweigh the other. <laughs> like, if we're looking at track records of these countries, yeah. uh, how do you tell? How can you tell? You know, but um, <laughs> I think you have to. I would probably like in in decision theory, right? There's like this idea called maxi min, where you're trying to minimize the worst case scenario. And so yeah. I would just go, all right, well, here's the worst case scenarios we got in this camp. And here's the worst <laughs> case scenarios we got in this camp. I say that these are even worse. And so therefore, like, I'd probably go on that route of it. Uh, but I think there's actually some really fascinating stuff with UK elections, like just their process that I find so interesting that yeah. I really, really prefer to US elections. So that's really like the only thing that I would want to talk about. Like, yeah, you get into, you know, the actual outcomes and policies and how people's lives are affected. But I just think their process of election is fascinating. And I think that there's so much that we could gain by instituting some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, I don't think we would have quite as like, disgustingly dirty of a primary system if we use like UK styles of like ranking your uh, elected officials. Yeah, because like, I, uh, yeah, I mean, we're kind of we're weird because right now we're on opposite sides of what, what we would be in a, in a round. Um, so right, right. But, right. Cause, uh, but yeah, so if I was yeah doing the affirmative, all the sort of uh, parliamentary representation, uh, multi-party system. It's like I think the multiple parties is good because that's something that's measurable. Um, yeah, yeah, that the, sure. the 
the results, you know, like favor multiple parties rather than just two. Um, right. And uh, and like you were talking about the money factor, um, we could probably and those are two pretty good advantages, I think. Um, and it's been my experience that in IPDA, you, you just you lay out a couple of advantages, and that's that's what you need for an affirmative too. <laughs> we used to do like three, um, but yeah. we just had more time. I mean, it's like it's shorter. Right, right. Well, I think there's a, there's a lot that you can kind of get through on each of these topics, but I think we pretty well laid out the strategy then. So if I'm you know telling students yeah. what they're going for, pick the two worst, knock those out, and like keep in mind what your favorite one is, and uh, know that you've got plenty of time yeah. to research even if you don't know something. So just go for the things you really don't want to see in a round, and otherwise, like you'll definitely get one of your top three choices. And a little reminder: we got ourselves an internship for these. Uh, um tournaments that we're, we're hosting okay uh and so we love to show people the ins and outs and back end on how to do it go there check it out send us something okay and we'd love to pay you to help us with that too yeah that is a paid internship everybody that is for real seas okay all right everyone um so this is tim cv and he's from Visolutions and san diego state university i am jared kabika miller big coach Professor of Communications. We will see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Nice.